Oh, back again. So I'm just a poetry buff. I do mean that. I used to, when I was a kid, kind of think poetry is kind of stupid. And then when I started teaching, started learning about it, I love poetry. I could read poetry, talk about poetry all day long. So, the only poet I know that was a little crazier than Lewis Carroll was maybe Edward Lear. Um, I've already done um, The Owl and the Pussycat. It was my wife Casey's favorite. I've done The Duck and the Kangaroo with my granddaughter. We made a video. We made a video of The Owl and the Pussycat, too. Uh, we made a video of The Jumblies, which is on my top ten of favorite videos I've made, The Jumblies. Um, I just now got through doing Calico Pie. And now we're going to do Two Old Bachelors. And uh, keep in mind that Edward Lear, this is completely nonsense. So I played a nonsense song to start the last one I did by him. And I'm going to start this one with a nonsense song. We'll finish about 30 seconds of that at the end. It's total nonsense. It's those minion things. Works for the story, though. Since a lot of Lear's poems are about people who become happy doing what they think they should do and not what other people think they should do, uh, and be, but doing what you think you should do isn't always the best way to live, especially if you're me. Especially when what you think you should do, oh, this is not me, but especially if you think what you should do is cooking someone else and eating them. Two old bachelors. Two old bachelors were living in one house. One caught a muffin, the other caught a mouse. Said he who caught the muffin to him who caught the mouse, this happens just in time, for we have nothing in the house, save a tiny slice of lemon and a teaspoon of honey. And what to do for dinner, since we haven't any money? And what can we expect if we haven't any dinner, but to lose our teeth and eyelashes, ah, like that, and keep on growing thinner? Said he who caught the mouse to he who caught the muffin, we might cook this little mouse if we only had some stuffing. If we had but sage and onion, we could do extremely well. But how to get that stuffing? Mm, it is difficult to tell. Those two old bachelors ran quickly to town. They asked for sage and onions as they wandered up and down. They borrowed two large onions but no sage was to be found in the shops or in the market or in the gardens all around. But someone said, a hill there is a little to the north and to its perpendicular top a narrow way leads forth. And there among the rugged rocks abides an ancient sage, an earnest man who reads all day a most perplexing page. Climb up, climb up and seize him by the toes, all studious as he sits, and pull him down and chop him up into endless little bits. Then mix him with your onion, <laughs> cut up likewise into scraps, when your stuffing will be ready, and very good, perhaps. Those two old bachelors 
without loss of time, the nearly purple-dicular crags at once begin to climb. And at the top, among the rocks, all seated in a nook, they saw that sage, a reading of a most enormous book. You earnest sage, they called, they, aloud they cried, your book you've read enough in. <laughs> we wish to cut you into bits to mix you in the stuffing. <laughs> They're honest. That old sage looked up, the old sage looked calmly up, and with his awful book, at those two bachelor's bald heads, a certain aim he took. <laughs> and over crag and precipice, they rode promiscuous down. At once they rode and never stopped in lane or field or town. And when they reached their house, they found, besides their want of stuffing, the mouse had fled and previously had eaten up the muffin. <laughs> they left the home in silence by the once convivial, I've never heard this word, convivial, it means a friendly and festive, so I don't know. And anyway, they left by that door, and from that hour, those bachelors were never heard of more. Oh, 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 oh,